Welcome back. Today is quite an exciting day of training for me because it's our last day of this first phase of training before our first rest week. Um, and I'm just really looking forward to this rest week. I feel like we put in a lot of good solid training and it's gonna be nice to uh, just sit back, relax and let it all sink into the body and then have a nice break and get ready to start another cycle of training nice and fresh. Um, so yeah, we've been, uh, We've kind of been mainly training some spray wall and, and some strength in the past couple weeks. And then the training will change up a bit after this rest week. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting, um, pretty exciting point in the program. So anyway, today was supposed to be our 45 minute campus session. But when I got to the gym and started walking over to the spray wall, I saw that they had like the little chain up and it was closed off and my heart kind of sank for a second. And uh, I thought they were resetting the spray wall because this, this set has been up for like a year now. Um, when me and Maddie visited Boulderville, uh last summer, like this spray wall is up. So I know it's kind of just any day now they're gonna reset it. And so I was like kind of scared. I um, haven't spent enough time on it to be satisfied and ready for the next one yet. So I was a little scared that they were resetting it, but it turns out they were just kind of setting the traverse walls that, are, that surround the spray wall in the little cave that it's in. But they had the whole area closed off so I couldn't use a spray wall. And so I was going back and forth on what to do. Um, it's supposed to be a campus session and I couldn't go to Studio Block. They don't have a, a spray wall that I can campus on. There's no other gyms that are nearby. So I just said, okay, you know, it's, it's it took me like an hour and a half to get to Boulder Belt because the train systems are kind of messed up right now to get to Frankfurt. I think there's construction or something. So it'd be quite the journey to go to another gym. Um, and campusing on the main walls kind of sucks. So it's just, uh, a surprise comp ball session again, which is always welcome. It's a lot of fun climbing on the comp ball here at Boulder Belt. Uh, the one kind of downside was that that kind of blister that I had on my pinky toe, uh, like I got a few days ago, it's been really impeding my climbing lately. Like yesterday, uh, our uh, day at Studio Block, like I was just suffering that whole time. My foot, it felt like my pinky toe was broken and uh, having climbing shoes on was really painful. So. Uh, I was a bit demoralized when I realized that I had to climb today because I was kind of looking forward to just campusing around in my socks. But it was a bit better uh, today. Like my shoe was kind of nice and worn in from yesterday. It was kind of nice and sweaty and comfortable. So it was fine. So we're on the comp wall. Uh, I'm just subbing out my 45 minute campus session for a 45 minute session of bouldering, which is relatively short for me. Usually we'll try to go for like an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. So 45 minutes is a nice little treat. A uh, short and sweet session. We can just focus on a few boulders. So I started off with that uh, first nine, pretty crimpy, physical boulder, like super my style. Um, it was pretty hard, but I managed to flash it. And then we moved on to that yellow one and I fell a couple times in the middle, kind of overcomplicating that sequence, seeing like a comp style move and then going and trying it instead of letting my body think, um, which has been the theme in like a couple of the past uh, boulder sessions. Uh, and then I realized I could just flip to the undercling beforehand. And uh, now we're moving on to this boulder, which is really cool. Uh, cool little paddle dyno. Managed to take the paddle on my first try. Um, and then the ending here is like, looks like it's supposed to be some sort of drop knee. Like I thought maybe you even sit on this hold, like the, this big hold. Um, but it was, it was kind of strange. It was a bit too overhung to, to sit on this hold. And I was trying to get a foot up. Um, and then I think on this down tier I do. But what was weird is like getting the, like a back step to get this drop knee. It was kind of weird because I couldn't quite get my toe up. It was a little bit too high to get the toe. And so I kind of have just this outside edge of my foot, which feels super unstable. And it feels like it's going to slip at any second. It feels like my foot's like barely on the hold. And so I'm like kind of desperately coming in this hold. Um, and I didn't, I wasn't stable enough to go for the finish. That uh, second last hold is quite bad. It's like, it's like this just sloper with a tiny bit of a, a, a divot in it. Um, the big one, the big sloper here is like pretty good. It's, it's like, really sticky and it's got a bigger groove and you can really pinch it. But this hold that you're on with your right hand is really bad. And so it's not like you can use it to pull yourself back in the wall while, while I'm getting pushed off. And so I'm sitting here thinking maybe there's a better way. And then I, I here I go and try um, this heel hook, which I didn't think it would work because I thought uh, that the second last hold just be, would be too guessed on to, to be able to use this heel, but it turned out to be a lot easier. And then, yeah, I kind of get like a heel, little heel toe cam and it makes this last move a lot easier. Um, so here's the send attempt. Um, this bowler is like super pretty. Uh, that's, it's kind of the theme with Boulder Belt. They, 
have like some really um, nice comp folders on their comp wall. And I think the way they set their wall, uh, set their comp wall, they do it in sections. So they don't like set a whole, like they don't set this whole island at once. They'll do like half of it at a time. And I think like maybe once a week, they set like a tiny section or something, or maybe every other week. And they only set like three bowlers at a time. And they have like three people, like I think what they'll do is they'll have one person set a bowler. Um, so they can really like take a lot of time to be super creative and, and put a lot of effort into one bowler. And it really shows they have a lot of, um, a lot of nice moves. Um, they're able to force some really comp style uh, moves and they always try to be creative, which I appreciate. You can like remember like a couple, a few uh, sessions ago near the beginning of this program, we had like a little comp wall session at Boulder Belt. And you know, they always try to like set trendy moves and and they'll set moves that you see on the World Cup circuit and give uh, climbers the opportunity to practice on um, these moves. Like remember that sort of stand up uh, move we had on the slab with the pink holds. So that's like always appreciated. They never just kind of, they don't they don't just uh, kind of copy and paste bowlers like some gyms will. They'll, they won't just put up the same bowler in different places in the gym. They always try to create something new and creative, which I really appreciate. And so now we're moving on to the slab. Um, another really good slab. I was looking forward to trying this one because it was going to test my pure balance skills. Um, there's no way of getting around this slab without just balancing on it, balancing on your feet. There's no holds to grab. Like that zone hold up at the top left of the wall there is just like a, a dual text, no shadow. It's just kind of a marker for a zone. It's not really a hold. And so like the slab where you just try to studio block, I could kind of get around my weakness of just being able to balance on that volume and really trust it by dynoing to that hold and just kind of using my power to my advantage. But this slab is very different. And so I always appreciate the opportunities to climb on slabs like these where it's just all on the feet because that's obviously something I need to work on. So we have this cool like first move where you stand into like this just one finger pocket. You kind of just balance on the volume and then the start hold is, is kind of just a marker for your hands. And then you got this foot cross and then this move where you step down is probably the crux. In the video it looks like you kind of just step into the side but when you're on the boulder actually it's it's the hold the foothold that you're stepping down to it feels a lot more downwards than it looks. So it makes for like a really sketchy move. The trick was to just pistol squat as much as I could actually, because I had to go down before I went to the side. Um, but it was a really, really cool move with the feet. And the last move was also really cool. You see, you have to go to this kind of two finger pocket. It's like, it feels like it's, it's not quite just an easy stand up. When you, when you get up there, you don't have as much air time as you think. So you have to stab your fingers in that pocket as fast as you can. That, that move, I like, I really like that move. That was my favorite move I've done in a while. It's very satisfying to do. And so, um, as I was kind of climbing in the session, I looked at the, kept checking the timer and the time was flying by. Um, 45 minutes of bouldering goes by really fast. So it was, it was nice to kind of just pick some of my, some of the coolest looking boulders, hop on those, and then all of a sudden the session was over. This is the last boulder we got on for this boulder session. Uh, this very cool little jump. Um, an eight tag, uh, kind of messed up the start once and then now we're, we stuck the jump. And it actually took me a long time to figure out this ending. When I was like previewing this boulder, it looks like you almost do some sort of elbow bar to match the finish hold. And so I tried that for a while and then I almost am able to match it like this. And then I think I'm falling and then I somehow save myself here. It's kind of funny. And then I think I end up like hanging out on this boulder for like 30 seconds or something, trying to figure it out. So I kind of just cut the video and then I don't know if this is the idea, but I kind of just put my butt against this hold and then I can find a no hands uh, for this finish. But yeah, that was a fun bowler. So in this session, we were able to send most of the bowlers on the comp wall. There's uh, one nine that I haven't gotten around to trying yet. It was, it was up the first time we climbed here. You can kind of briefly see it. It's the orange holds in the cave, like by those yellow pinches. It looks kind of crimpy and physical and I just haven't got around to trying it because it's kind of just like, uh, looks like sort of basic climbing. Um, and every time I have a session at Boulder World, I try to take advantage of the super comp style looking moves, at, uh, comp style looking boulders. And I can just like do basic climbing anywhere, right? Um, but I'll probably, hopefully it'll be up for a little bit longer after our rest week, maybe we can try it. It looks, it's probably the hardest looking boulder on the comp wall. So I think I want to try it for that reason. But yeah, now we're into our workout. And I am—I so, was so eager to get to rest week, 
that I decided to just do the workout right away uh, after the bowler session. Since it was so short, I thought I would have a lot of energy. Um, and I think this was, like I had mentioned previously, when we are at our 100 pound and above uh, hangboard, I usually force myself to rest for at least a couple hours before I do it. And so this is Zach breaking the rules. I shouldn't be doing this. Uh, today is, I'm gonna, I'm just sticking with 100 pounds. In the past few sessions, we've been kind of going up 10 pounds every session, but um, I don't wanna go up above 100 pounds until we switch to our two to five second hangs. Uh, 100 pounds is kind of where I like to keep it, um, or I like to keep the maximum weight when we're doing our five second hangs. So yeah, 100, 100 pound hang means I shouldn't be doing this right after the session, but I, I'm just, I kind of knew, knew that I was breaking the rules and this wasn't optimal, but I wanted rest week early. I wanted it like, you know, four hours or earlier than it would have been. So I kind of just did it right away and it, it and it kind of showed. You can kind of see with those hangs, I was, I was struggling uh, a little bit, um, especially compared to when we were doing our 100 pound, our last hangboard session, we were doing 100 pounds on our rooftop and those hangs felt quite solid and I was feeling really strong. These ones were not so much. I was kind of eyes closed, trying really hard and I was maybe making it to four seconds, four and a half seconds. I actually don't think I was getting the full five seconds. So that's what I get for uh, not uh, resting enough and training optimally. But you know, sometimes you can treat yourself and that's just what I did. It means I get the rest of the day to, to have a, a little extra bonus bit of rest week. And then pinches. We're also a bit weaker as well. Uh, we've been doing 66 pounds pretty consistently at this uh, second and rep range, um, but today we had to do 62 pounds. And that's when I realized I really screwed up. It's like, as soon as I couldn't pinch 66, I was like, okay, I should have rested. It was not so good. Um, so it was kind of a suboptimal workout, but I pushed through anyway. So we were kind of doing some so-so pinches today at 62 pounds. and. Like another, I was kind of thinking about this while I was doing this workout and I, and I thought to myself like, what I really, what I realized is for me, um, I've kind of been, it was actually, I think during COVID, during lockdown is when I started drinking a lot of coffee. I wasn't really a coffee drinker before. Um, but like I found when, since so fun, here's a, a fun fact. I don't think I've actually mentioned this. Maybe I have. My parents own a climbing gym, so they own Climbers Rock. When I say Climbers Rock is my home gym, my family actually owns the gym. So during lockdown, I was super lucky. I got to climb the whole time um, and I had the gym all to myself. And while that sounds pretty great, it was actually, it got like a little bit lonely a lot of the time and I was not very motivated and oftentimes I didn't actually want to go train. But anyway, when you're in this big gym all by yourself, it's easy to get like drowsy. So I really started pounding back the espressos and it got to the point over the last few years where I'm like drinking six, seven espressos a day, sometimes eight. It's, it's, it's a bit out of control. And so when I have this session where I go right into my workout, usually what my routine is, I'll like, I'll take a double espresso before every session, basically. So let's say I have my morning campus session, that's two espressos. And then I rest for a couple hours and then it's another double espresso right before the, the workout. And so I guess right now I'm kind of going into this workout without the adequate amount of caffeine. I think that actually makes a difference. Um, so that's something I think I need to keep in mind. I kind of had a little bit of epiphany on that. Um, but yeah, anyway, this, let's say this is the last time I connect the workouts uh, for the next little bit. When we start our next phase of training, I'll be better and I'll make sure I rest all the time. But yeah, that wraps up today's day of training. Um, now I'm about to start my six day rest week, which I'm really looking forward to. Maddie's got the world championships in Switzerland and we're gonna go, I'm gonna go travel there with her obviously. and watch her compete in that and just watch a lot of the world's best climbers and get super fired up for the next phase of training. See you after the rest week.